I'm Fred White. I'm president of the Historical Society. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for turning out your patience as we as we start this. I think everyone's up from downstairs. Uh, you're in uh, the soldiers' barracks, which was sort of 1853 the building, so it's a relic in itself. Uh, as a president of the York Sunbury Historical Society, we have, we have the Fredericton Region Museum. The Historical Society's a volunteer group of about 60 to 70 people, and uh, we our major project is to operate the Fredericton Region Museum. We also do programs and publications and a lot of other things. Uh, we hope you enjoy the exhibit. Uh, we think it's a very important part of history, and uh, we're so pleased to be able to, you know, to show the. You know, this are really the the originators, the the first pioneers of this area, and are, are settlers of a lot of the people. And uh, it's uh, through Bob McNeil curating the exhibit, and as one of our seventy volunteers, but probably one of the more active volunteers is. He, he accomplishes a lot of other historical projects besides this because he does a magazine for Fredericton North and he's got his own magazines and he's just a general supporter of a lot of activities. Uh, I guess I, I would like to uh, acknowledge some of the people that are here that with Pam Lynch is here to represent the province and Pam is a strong supporter of heritage. She's, she attends most of the events that go on in the north side. She's the north side representative. She does both north and south, and even if it's heritage outside. She just, and she's always positive when we do grants. She'll support us when we, when we just do something. She's positive, involved in the new school. She made sure that it was Gibson Neal were in the school name. She had to work hard. She represented both the Marysville Heritage and the Northside Heritage and in this group. Uh, she she was just uh, she's just a tower of strength. And uh, so I with that she she represents us so well. On that she's fundamental in Northside Market, a whole lot of things. So I'd just like to invite her up to make a few remarks, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Fred, but I think you're talking about someone else, not me. <laughs> Anyhow, look, uh, I can't think of a better venue than to uh, be out here outside today, and it's a beautiful day, and it's so nice to see so many of you here. And I want to thank you for your kind invitation, and I'm delighted to be given the opportunity to say a few words. I always look forward to getting out and catching up with old friends and making new ones along the way. I've had many visits to the museum, and I want to thank Ruth for always making me feel so welcome. I am proud to be a New Brunswicker. We have something special here that is the envy of the world. Our sense of community and our spirit of family sets us apart. We have maintained our grip on some of those important values that are passed down from one generation to the next. I am excited to experience Bob McNeil's exhibit because it will help to give us a glimpse of those past generations and who they were. Those pre-loyalist planters of early Majorville Sheffield planted more than crops. You could say that they planted the seeds for all that has grown to become part of the St. John River Valley. Bringing this history to life for all of us to observe is such a gift, and I thank Bob for all of the time he has spent crafting this exhibit. And I must say that I had the chance to view it before we came up here, and you've done a phenomenal job. Congratulations and thank you. During 2013, we are celebrating 250 years of Majorville Sheffield. Imagine all that has happened in two and a half centuries. Think of the changes even in our recent history. Who can recall driving by the Loyalist Clock Company in Sheffield or stopping in to view some of their beautiful work? How far back must we travel in order to recall a time when there wasn't a big potato waving at passing motorists as they drove through Majorville? As they say, 
time marches on, but we're lucky to have an opportunity every so often to pause and look back. Thanks to the Fredericton Region Museum and Bob McNeil, we are getting one of those opportunities now. Thank you again very much, and I hope you all enjoy your evening. So thank you, Pam. Uh, I have to add with that that the province through their heritage branch and the, and the government that Pam represents uh, gave us a $10,000 grant to pay the, the, a lot of the cost for the construction of the exhibit. So it, they, they put their money where their mouth was. And I also have to acknowledge there's uh, cities well represented here uh, with Steve Chase uh, and Eric McGarity. Eric uh, is also president of the Frederick and North Heritage Association, so it's, it's nice to have him here. Uh, and Ian is here from Frederick and Heritage Trust. Thank you, Ian. Uh, I guess we we didn't have the we, we I won't go on too long, so we won't have the. Uh, uh, we didn't ask the Fredericton uh, uh, city to, to speak because we're trying to keep it a little short in the heat. And so I'll, I won't do a long introduction. Mr. Gullison, what Majorville's doing with their celebration is so significant. And the volunteers, we've got to know a few of them. And the, we see how hard they're working. Not only they're hard working, they're well organized. And uh, it, it's, and it's sort of, it meshes with what we do. And Bob has worked both ways. So Mr. Gullison, I'm going to invite him to come up and represent this group that, that work hard, practical, lots of enthusiasm, turning people out. I think it's just wonderful. So Mr. Gullison, if you'd come up and just give us some of your views. <clears throat> Thank you, Fred, uh, MLA, Pam Lynch, and uh, Robert and the guests and representatives, it is a pleasure, I guess, for me to represent Majorville. Uh, there's other people here more qualified, I'm sure, I see sitting back here tonight, but uh, they wanted to see me perform, I guess, that's why they designated me to do that. Uh, I am from Majorville, I am a lifelong resident. Uh, yes, I was there for the 200th birthday, and I remember it vividly. Uh, perhaps maybe that's why I was started this about two years ago trying to promote it along with my cousin to Bill Powers and uh, after talking talking a storm up with uh, well MLA Pam here and the government people and local other local people uh, we finally we formed an organization and a steering committee named the Majorville 250 Heritage Committee this comprised of members of myself and Bill Powers Janet Phillips Pastor Stephen Budd and Charles Harvey uh, after a series of meetings in the community, uh, requested input from all the local residents and community organizations, the four churches. Uh, we had, st had such a tremendous response from our community that uh, actually uh, it got going quicker than I thought. From that, our current agenda and format was created. You know, we have created a special logo, the Major 250. It was created by Reverend David Phillips, Lasting Impressions, we call it. Who is he, uh, David is a former resident of the Major now lives in Nova Scotia as a pastor. Uh, he's also the brother of Janet Phillips sitting down here, who is our community member and uh, representative, and most of you know her uh, quite well. Uh, we, this committee involved many talented, educated, creative, energetic individuals who have willingly volunteered their services, connections, and talent. Our committee's two main goals are as follows. We, we celebrate the 213 in our community of Major on Sheffield, which is 250 years ago. The area uh, the, was all Majorville. Sheffield, as we know it today, was established as a separate parish in 1786, 23 years after the establishment of Majorville. Uh, uh, this is going to be a fun, informative, educational year of all local events reflecting highlights and changes in Majorville or the, in Sheffield over the past 250 years. Majorville was the first English established settlement in all of New Brunswick. 
and uh, the historians will explain all that out to you, but mainly when we had over 800 people arrive in four ships one summer to settle Mageville, that's what gave it the settlement establishment. There was people living there long before, but when you get over 800 at one time, that made a settlement. Unfortunately, 600 or more of those died that very first winter, but left the seeds behind that uh, allowed us to be here tonight. John LaRue, a local historian, has made application on Majorals' behalf with Heritage Canada to have our area of Majoral Sheffield recognized with the federal heritage designate for a, a federal heritage designation. We expect to receive that designation by the by year end. Upon receiving this designation, our provincial heritage minister, Honorable Trevor Holder, has made it known that his department will supply and install new road signage for both Majorville and Sheffield both upon entering and leaving our communities. This will reflecting the significance of our local and national heritage. One such other person is author and historian Bob McNeil, who as we know is responsible for this wonderful exhibit which we are here opening tonight. And I'm really pleased that when you volunteer some good things happen. One of the good things is I got to know you and others and all the work you're doing to reflect what we recently started out. I uh, would like to acknowledge Peter Pacey as his Calathumpians that perform here and have for years. Uh, they're putting on through drama of, of they're putting on a reenactment through drama of early life as it was in Majorville called Staging Majorville. Some 15 shows here in Officer Square over the summer months of July and August, and several presentations throughout the summer in Majorville and Sheffield. Uh, I would personally like to thank the members of the Major 250 Organizing Committee, especially Janet Phillips, for leading the way through all of the organizing and scheduling setting. I would also like to thank our volunteers and participants throughout our community, city, and province and beyond for participating in our 250 Major World Birthday Celebration. Secondly, I would only say that the work of building Major on Sheffield history will continue through the volunteer work and government support as well as other local organizations support over the next five years, much like your exhibit here. Information on this work will slowly come out over the next year's schedule. I would also acknowledge our MLA Pam Lynch, whose moral support and encouragement has linked our organization with all the appropriate supporting provincial government departments. I encourage you and other friends to experience our ancestral history through the months and years ahead as we celebrate our past together. Our overall goal, goal is to document and brand our community's history, educate and leave a legacy for future generations to know something about New Brunswick and even Canada's humble beginnings. And as I was talking to Councillor Chase, the city of Fredericton's early beginnings was supported by Mageville. This all started here in Mageville 250 years ago. Uh, I would only say that uh, if we can just all take take from this tonight and uh, tell even two or three more people, because I was having lived in Majorville my whole life uh, in the last uh, number of years. I mean, really, all we have down there is the big potato now <laughs> to identify Majorville and, and the Majorville Baptist Church and a couple of churches. So we really need our identity preserved, and I'm hoping. This turnout tonight that you people each take that as a personal responsibility to help us do that. Remember, pay attention. They say history repeats itself. You can read into that, whatever that means. Thank you very much. I just want to, sh people, we have a schedule and there's our logo and that logo we hoped to keep that alive in the days ahead. And uh, the flat bottom boat there was created by Charles Harvey, who's here tonight as well. The flat bottom boat was a means of how we defended this area 250 years ago. Thank you very much.